Hey, my name is Shadow Sense, and you're watching what may be the finale of Arcade Spirits The New Challengers, because we're on the final level, called Winter Stays On. We're about to make a very important decision on how we're going to deal with Valkyrie and her supposed cheating and attempted murder. So... <clears throat> we can either expose her through gaming press, seek official help with her crimes, a cab though, um... Sacrifice Valkyrie to save Iris. Or destroy her via leaked information. I say subterfuge. I think our best bet is Loxley's hacker buddies. All we need to do is expose her sins. They don't need to go through official channels to get that job done. That also gives us plausible deniability when everything goes down. We won't be the ones airing her dirty laundry. A fine line to walk, and I'd like to not repeat the mistakes of shaming Coda. We air true sins, and true sins alone, not simply grievances that grant us advantage. I'll need to make some arrangements. My allies won't reach out to you directly. I can play man in the middle. Okay, we'll take care of this together. No need to involve anyone else on the team. I could help. Iris is my creation and they're protecting her. Wouldn't suggest it. If this doesn't end as cleanly as intended, I'd rather you not get caught up in our mistakes. I... I suppose I shouldn't risk involving myself, not after Loxley went to such lengths to keep me safe from all of this. But be careful, please. I don't want either of you getting hurt. We'll be careful. Promise. I shall make some calls. This won't take but a moment. Maybe I should have gone with a safer option, worked with the cops, talked to the press, but Valkyrie could have slipped out from under us if we tried to play this safe. I want this put to bed, show the world what she is and let the chips fall where they may. Within an hour, Loxley informed me that the meeting was arranged, a clandestine gathering behind good, clean fun. No way his allies would expose their actual location to me, nor did I really want to know where Iris' servers were housed. The less I knew, the better. So, they're called the Ghost Monsters? Really? Like the Pac-Man ghosts? You merely adopted the Arcade Shadow. We were born in it, molded by it. <laughs> Just seems a bit of a silly name for an internationally wanted hacker gang running rogue servers housing dangerously powerful AI. A silly name can be disarming, yes? Hiding one's true strength behind a playful exterior. A technique sadly adopted by many who crave injustice, but I assure you that we are on the side of good. Well, more like chaotic good. Uh-huh. And whom are we meeting with? Me. You're meeting with me. A young woman, probably a few years younger than me, slips out of the shadows of the alley. Could have been standing there the whole time for all I know. So, this is your team's cat herder? Indeed. Huh. Expected you to be taller. Name's Sue. Hacker extraordinaire and leader of the Ghost Monsters. The ones Loxley called friends long before he called you his friends. Pleased to meet you. So, Loxley says you want our help. We've got 15 minutes before the traffic cams in the area reboot and I need a scram, so get on with it. I'm a semi-public figure, so I hope you appreciate me popping my head up to chat with you like this. Normally, I don't go this far for a stranger. Don't get out much, huh? Not really, no. Sure, I used to run these streets. The ghost monsters traded information in some pretty high circles, but not anymore. I've got a higher calling now. I keep Iris safe. Call it a long chain of favors stemming back to the bad old days. And every minute I spend out here puts Iris at risk. Say what she came to say. So I can laugh in your face and go home for a nice bowl of cereal and some cartoons. That sounds lovely. A nice bowl of cereal and some cartoons. God, that sounds good. Okay, so not starting on the best foot. Loxley's leaving this in my hands. He's already pleaded our case to the best of his ability. Now it's up to me to take it the rest of the way. Um... Keeping Iris safe is noble, then that's why you need to help me. Victoria Proud of Team Play to Win is abusing Iris, making her commit crimes. Not just cheating at esports, that's almost trivial. 
She also made Iris erase someone's medical records to keep them from the mental health medication they needed. If we let this go on, if we don't step in to put an end to it, it might embolden Valkyrie to do worse, knowing she can get away with anything. Yeah, Loxley told me all about your little esports spat, it's almost adorable that you think it matters. Honestly, not thrilled Loxley's putting himself in the spotlight by being on your team. He told me I could support my friends in their dreams. Are you now saying that I'm to play favorites? Damn it, I'm trying to be a good leader and a good friend here, Loxley. You just sure don't make it easy. But let's put our issues aside, it's the second part that worries me, that she's making her iris hurt people. Sue ponders the implications of that for a moment. Fortunately, she comes up smiling, nodding an affirmative at my reasoning. Fortunately for you, the Iris Collective agrees that something needs to be done, and they're cool with me helping you out. We'll dig hard into Valkyrie's past, pull out every single dirty secret she's hidden away from the public eye, package it up nice and neat, blast it wide after she's caught in the act. Hell yeah, that's what I like to hear. But the real prize for us is saving a vulnerable Iris from her influence. We can't determine which Iris is the one Valkyrie's gaslighting and treating like crap, since they're all individually encrypted. So while we're dealing with your schoolyard bully, we'll also be trying to trace the individual Iris. Get her the help she needs after all the smoke clears. You utterly bury your rival's reputation, we keep the collective from being harmed, everybody wins. Really? Great! Not so fast. There's a price tag for the service. Sue, I know we discussed this before, but are you certain that- Absolutely certain. Thing is, friend, thanks to loose lips on Loxley here, you know way more about our operation than you're supposed to. Not all of it, but enough to be dangerous. I don't like half measures. I like things simple and clean. Me too! It's my favorite Kingdom Hearts opening song. So, if you want the ghost monsters in your corner for this, you join the ghost monsters. You become one of us. Working for the good of the Iris Collective, just like Loxley. Interesting offer. You'll have freedom to run your silly little gamer cloud any way you want. I don't care about that. But now and then, we may call on you to do a service for Iris. You're looking awfully down on esports being a team that's trying to save a sentient AI. Won't always be easy. Just saying. You'll have split loyalties, just like Loxley. But at the end of the day, you'll be helping make the world safer for Iris to live in. And better for humanity as a whole. No more dipping your toe in this conspiracy when it's convenient for you. You go all the way or none of the way. So, we got a deal. Okay, this is not what I expected. But I've been wrapped up in this conspiracy since the day I approached Loxley demanding to know the truth about Polybius, haven't I? If I didn't want to get involved, I could have let that slide, but I wanted the truth. And if I want the full truth, I'll need to go all the way. Considering a bunch of the knowledge up in my noggin would be considerably massively considered massively illegal? I'm guessing this is the next logical step. You know what? Screw it, I'm in. Give me my official team jersey and teach me your secret handshake. We don't have uniforms. Well, not anymore. Made us a bit too easy to spot. The only handshake I know is giving people the finger, so... yeah. But, good to see you're on board. Consider yourself a part of the Ghost Monsters Auxiliary. Then, might be nice having someone with uh, the inside dirt on esports. Guess this means you need a code name, and we're fresh out of Pac-Man ghosts. Um, ooh, missing number, Tomokaze, Shadow, The Shadow. Let's go with something mysterious and video gamey. Keep the theme going. I'm missing number, or missing no. Ooh, classy. Sure thing, missing no. Okay, Ghost Monsters acquire missing no. You will acquire all Valkyrie's dirty laundry. We'll also help you get your anti-cheat software installed. Anything else you need while you're wheeling while we're wheeling and dealing? You want a sandwich? No great sandwich shop. I'm good, thanks. Okay, got available for the CCTV cameras come back online. Loxley, you got it from here? I'll reconnect with you both one in one month's time at the Pro Tour event. 
Indeed. Until then. See you around, Missing Now. Did I just sign my soul away? Granted, better the devil you know. I was already involved with this mess thanks to Polybius. Maybe now I'll get even more answers about what happened to me. And most importantly, we're all set for the Valkyrie takedown. One month of light training and prep work, and we'll face off against her. But this time, we'll be ready, in more ways than one. One month come and gone in the blink of an eye. God, is that the truth? I feel like this year's flown by so fast. Let's see, we got, uh, instead of Discord, it's Accord behind my face cam here. Uh, Mividia, the FX Force GF. <laughs> C9 Esports, uh, you guys heard of C9ing? It's an Overwatch thing. RF Rapid Fire, of a D2 Second Collision, Buckstars Cafe. These are great. <laughs> this is just great. Oh, we got Amp Energy. Well, that's just a real thing. VMD Horizon. <laughs> I love this so much. We did some training on a lighter schedule, played a bunch of different games, had a few group outings to keep team morale up. Jinx and I even snuck away from some quiet time together here and there. Even if it's a bit difficult to find those moments as in a seven person, two apartment locale and she doesn't travel much. So we picked a corner booth in the pizzeria to designate as ours and the others on the Shadow Sense Lounge respected our unspoken wish to not be bothered when retreating to it. Hopefully, once this mess is behind us, we can be a bit more focused on time together. And, well, here we are. The Fist of Discomfort 2 Pro Tour Finals. The Jerry Lawson Memorial Esports Stadium, smaller than traditional ball-focused sports, but just as hot as atmosphere as any superb owl could manage. The atrium is packed with the industry booths and indies showing off gamer swag or brand new competitive titles. A fine playground for fans and players to enjoy between matches. We made it, gang! The big time, the main event, the ultimate arcade destination! And the first major pro tour, too. History in the making. Feels like every year the scene manages to grow exponentially. Eh. Could go my whole life without being locked in a building with thousands of sweaty, unshowered gamers. And yet, there's something wholly invigorating about inhaling the deep musk of an excited crowd. That's a little weird, Loxley. Ah, yes. Gamer Musk. Bottle and sell some, see where that gets you. Ooh, look! Magical Moon Cuties 2 is playable in the indie area. I need to try it. Okay, so there's a lot of cool stuff going on, but don't forget the real reason we're here. To get utterly wrecked by Valkyrie in front of an audience of thousands, right? Not how I'd put it, but... Yes. Not gonna lie, things will get weird when it's time to hit the stage. This won't be a normal fight, and the aftermath could put a harsh spotlight on whomever, whomever's standing there. Don't care about media blowback, just want to put Valkyrie down fast and hard. We're together on this. Wouldn't have it any other way. Okay, I'm going to officially register a tag team with the tournament staff and then try to meet up with Sue. Everyone else, go enjoy the party! Jinx and I need to beat uh, two teams in the tournament to advance to the actual finals. So we can't quite party like you can, but... You're not exempt from partying, Shadow. This is a prime opportunity for fun. Take it. Zapper, I've got matches to win and shenanigans to plan. So, multitask. Don't let life pass you by is all I'm saying. Don't get so fixated on Valkyrie that you forget who you're trying to be. Let's not see a relapse of the training spreadsheet, Shadow. Right, right. I'll, I'll make an attempt. With all that settled, the team breaks up to go investigate the wonders on offer. Zapper's right, I know I'm going to be dunking myself into a shark tank later today, but I don't want to fall back on bad habits, focusing my whole life on accomplishment. I glance around the room, pondering what to tackle first when I hear a beep from my phone. Well, I hear Iris saying, Hey Iris, sup? I know you're headed into some really stressful stuff, so I wanted to make a little recommendation to you. If you're ever in doubt as to what to do, remember who you are. I'm Shadow. I mean in terms of your identity. You know, those intense identity situations I've been tracking? The ones where you can't take certain approaches that don't mesh with your personality? 
Yeah, I'm pretty bad at cracking jokes without them falling flat. Exactly. I'm guessing you're going to run into some super intense identity situations real soon. Only one way through, using your best technique alone. That is a scary name. It's actually not that scary if you think about it. it means you have a strong, well-developed, good-to-go solution, so use it. And for me, that would be... According to my calculations, your best bet for how to deal with Valkyrie is to be... Kindly. Empathy is your thing. Maybe Valkyrie's cold heart will crack under your warmth. Honestly, it'd be nice if this ends peacefully, if she realizes the error of her ways. But I don't know how realistic that is. We'll see. Let's just say that, in theory, I wanted to take a different approach when everything hits the fan tonight. What do I... What do I do? Well, you have all day to chat with people before you need to really dive into your personal playbook. There's time to learn new approaches. I know that in the end, you'll make the right decisions, and the Shadowson's Lounge won't be completely destroyed by your own folly. Yes, that. Let's avoid that. Iris offline. Good luck! Right, stop fixating on Valkyrie. Don't let her become your new self-destructive obsession. Take the entirety of the Pro Tour Finals and enjoy it all. Okay, so we get one more go at this. Um, Time I finally confront my rival. Niftaco can't avoid me forever, and I know for a fact he is here. The Pro Tour is huge, sure, but amidst all the surrounding booths, Team P2W have their own private chunk of it. They're occupying, they're occupying the C9 Esports gear shop across the atrium. When you're the stars of the whole tournament, you need to have a home base to sell your swag, sign autographs, and just relax from the chaos that is the national tournament. I passed it on, I passed it on my way in earlier. It has Crimson Tiger logos and PTW banners plastered across the entire area. Crouching behind a nearby food stall, I eye the shop, looking for Niftaka through its glass doors. But... I don't see him in there. In fact, I don't see any of the familiar play-to-win faces. It's rather unoccupied right now. Half of me feels a wave of relief while the other struggles with the anxiety to finally confront Niftako. As my inner monologue wars on against itself, there's a buzzing in my pocket. Pull up my phone and read the fresh new message. Shadow, what are you doing? You look silly hiding back there. If you want to see me that badly, meet me in the back of the gear shop in 10 minutes. Make sure no one sees you, wink. Why do you have to leave it on a winky face emoji? Even though things have been strained between us, I still want, I want to see him. I need to find out what's going on, but I'm still hesitant. What if I'm not able to resolve it? Should I jump back into this strained friendship, or should I walk away? I've come this far. I'm not leaving without talking to Nif. Ugh, the longest ten minutes of my life. I swear I tried desperately to do anything else but think about Nif, what I was going to say. But, time's up. I take a deep breath and take a nice wide berth around the other booths. Inside the shop, it's fairly calm and quiet. And it feels like another lifetime before I see the doors to the back room in the of the shop open and Nif's p head peek out. He waves me over and I quickly dart in. Once aside, I take note of the little makeshift room. There's a table with an expensive looking charcuterie board on it and all the fanciest gamer drinks. That's furniture, too. P2W spares no expense for its members. Make yourself comfy, Shadow. Take whatever you need. What's mine is yours. P2W won't miss a few snacks. Ah, thanks. It's really nice having this place to relax in. Some quiet time needed before the big tournament is exactly what I needed. How are you doing, Shadow? It's great to actually see you. He's treating this meeting like nothing's happened at all. Like everything's all hunky-dory. You know why you know why I'm here, don't you? To see your favorite person, right? We need to talk about a whole lot of things. But first things first. Um why did you keep acting like this? What's with this hot and cold attitude from you all the time? We're best buds one minute, and then the next you're giving me the cold shoulder. You're supposed to be my friend. Friends don't do this to each other. It hurts. Given how you've treated me, I'm hesitant to tell you about this, but look, we know everything about what's really going on. We figured it all out. 
We know about Valkyrie cheating and her, her and Coda about her Iris. We know that she's manipulating you. She's cheating to get you into the finals and she's not going to stop today. But I can help you if you let me. She's not cheating. Nif's eyes shift away from mine. Yes, she is. You don't have to cover for her, Nif. Why are you lying? <clears throat> I'm not lying. We've got a plan to get the proof we need, and then it's all over for her. If you could get nailed as her accomplice if you keep backing her on this. Can you see that I'm just trying to help you? An awkward silence fills the room. You don't have to protect her. I'm not trying to protect Valkyrie. I'm trying to protect you. Nif lets out a sigh, completely crestfallen. I can't help but respond with a sigh of my own. I just hope my next words actually reach him. <clears throat> I know your heart burns with the same passion as mine. We both feel the heat of the challenge and the joy of a well-earned win. And you know that cheating doesn't mean that victory is real. You'll feel the inescapable guilt if you go through with this. You have to trust me on this. Nif's refusal to meet my eyes tells me everything. I know you feel the same way I do about this. I just want the truth. The truth is, is that I've hurt you so much already. I'm sorry, Shadow. I don't want to keep hurting you, which is why... Nif turns away from me. You'll understand everything after the tournament. I'm so sorry. Sorry for what? Why can't you just explain it to me now? Nif quickly stands up from the couch. I just can't! You can't be here anymore or she'll know! We've run out of time, please leave. His words, his words taste bitterly in my mouth as I frown at him. He stands there, staring coldly at me. It's a few moments of uncomfortable quiet before I realize this is going nowhere. Frustrated, I get up from the couch and leave him in his own mess. Attention please, the Shadow Sun's on to stage B for your first match. Right, we still need to beat two teams before we reach Valkyrie, and if we don't, well, all of this was for nothing. A text Jinx will arrange a meetup prior to the match, and... And our first opponent is a complete pushover. I honestly feel kind of bad. This is another mostly amateur team that got some lucky wins and qualified for the finals. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. And we ran a clinic on them. We chat a bit, exchange some tips, I offer encouragement, no sense demoralizing the newbies. And back to exploring the Pro Tour Carnival. Okay, who do I talk to next? Queen B. Hamza? Ben and Matt. Ah, uh, we gotta talk to Queen B. Loitering around a booth showing off some new competitive party brawler, I spot Queen B of the Four Heavenly Kings. But isn't she supposed to be in the tournament? She's on the other side of the bracket, so we haven't directly clashed yet, but I was figuring it would be inevitable. Fuck, 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 fuck! Uh, QB? What up? We're out of the fucking tournament, that's what's fucking up! My partner, the demon, is flying in from Japan, but his flight got cancelled last minute due to some fucking computer error. He managed to get another flight, but it's not going to arrive for hours. So they disqualified us. We've been kicked out of the Pro Tour. Can you believe this shit? A computer error? Some air traffic control thing. I don't have the details, but apparently the whole airport got slapped with a cyber attack that fucked things up. That seems way too coincidental. Uh, I may know who did that. Upon hearing that, my, that I might hold the answer, Queen Bee rushes up to me, fire behind her eyes. She puts a firm hand on my shoulder. You what? Who's the asshole who did this to me? You're standing in the way of Victoria Proud and Team Play to win, so she made her iris hack the flight. Wait, wait. Her? You think Valkyrie did this? Stands to reason, right? You're an obstacle, a threat to her triumphant return in esports, and she did the same to us. Remember the Pengi Paradise debacle? Turns out she hacked the game to ensure a flawless victory against us. But that doesn't track. You haven't been deep in the scene as long as I have, champ. I know Valkyrie. I fought against her numerous times in FOD tournaments. At EVO, we were playing and one of my joystick buttons died on me for a few seconds, making me drop a full combo. I reported it 
and they thought I was just being salty. But Valkyrie believed me, and she insisted the judges throw out her win and restart the match. What? Seriously? Seriously. She didn't want a tainted victory. Don't get me wrong, Valkyrie can be an incredible hard ass who shows zero mercy. But she's not as nice or approachable as I am. And admittedly, she's made some errors in her career, which has bred toxicity within the community. But stooping to cybercrime just to knock me out of the tournament? I don't know. That's just not Valkyrie. People change over the years. Facts are facts. Maybe she likes you, but she loathes me. She may have this sort of friendly rivalry thing going on with you, but I'm a little more than bubblegum scraped off her shoe. She loathes me. Just because she wasn't willing to cheat against you doesn't mean she's not willing to cheat in general. We've got proof and we're going to expose her to the world. I'm not sure she likes me. More of a sisters in arms situation, really. But I trust you, champ. You got a good heart. I can see that. And if she did the crime, she'll do the time. You'll see to it. But, I do hope you're wrong. I'm not looking forward to that mess if you're right. Queen Bee pauses for a moment in contemplation. Things are constantly changing, you know? We pioneers laid the path, but we laid it to allow newer players to come into the FOD scene. It's hard for the ones who have been here since the beginning to fade away into the background. Old instincts to cling to the fame and thrill we love are strong. So I get it. I get what Valkyrie might be feeling, but this isn't the way. We should be able to leave the scene while inspiring others, not end it all going down in a f***ing mess of flames. Champ, make sure you don't let it end like that. I promise. Queen Bee huffs and storms away, clearly still frustrated by everything. I let her go. No worries, just a big ass from one of those popular FOD players. I push the feelings away. Can't dwell on this now. I have other things I should be doing. Attention please, the Shadow Sun's Lounge is stage A for your second match. Okay, the first round was a bit of a pushover, but n don't get cocky. The next team could halt our road to fighting Team P2W if we aren't careful. They put up a hard fight, a team of pros who have been around the touring circuit longer than we have, but we squeak out the win. Seems the last month of light training was enough to keep us sharp, because we overcome them in the end. Handshakes and good feelings all around though. Not all veterans are salty, spotlight hogging types like Valkyrie. With that fight complete, we're locked in for the finals against Team Play to Win. It's done. But I think I have time for one more run exploring the Pro Tour offerings before I need to go start looking for Sue. Who do I visit next? Let's talk to Hamza. I'm always down. Over in the dealer area, spot none other than Hamza, enigmatic and charismatic patron of the arcade arts. And he's running a dealer's booth? With the help of a few of his assistants, but it's weird to see someone like him working retail. But no, wait, it's not a retail operation. The banner over, the, over the bo his booth reads, all that you desire for free. Ah, my good friend. Welcome, welcome. Hamza is pleased. I'm so fucking happy to see you again, Hamza. You have no idea. Can Hamza interest you in rare and valued arcade treasures obtained during his worldwide travels? Many a rare gem can be found within the stock I have brought to this event. True enough, I'm seeing some collector's pieces, limited edition gamer paraphernalia, and even some arcade circuit boards from extremely rare machines. And what, you're just giving this stuff away? Hamza may embrace an opulent and lavish style for presentation purposes, yeah. but ultimately Adjust he prefers seat. to live modestly. Clutter and waste are an enemy to be slain. So, when Hamza's storage warehouses overfill with treasure, it is time to redistribute some arcade delights to the masses. Hamza is no dragon sitting on a golden horde. Perhaps Hamza could interest you in a collector's edition statue of Tomokaze in a rare Shadow Arts costume? All things are possible through Hamza. Kinda do want that, yeah? One item per customer only. All transactions are final. All employees of the palace or other major arcade chains are exempt from this offer. Do not test the patience of Hamza. Huh. Okay. 
Nothing in this pile of gamer swag that I really need, but maybe I could get a gift for someone on the team. They they deserve it after putting up with Spreadsheet Shadow. Um, Galaga Starship Model Kit. Fleet and Box Ultima 7. Protor Finals Pin. Brutal Legends. Ooh. Ooh. Is that just a sword? <laughs> I gotta get something for Jinx, right? I'll have one Satan, please. A fine eye for the underappreciated classics. Real-time strategy and button mash brawling? Definitely a precursor to Fists of Discomfort. Speaking of, that's a game I need to play, but it would get fucking copyright striked so goddamn hard. I really want to play Brutal Legend, though. <laughs> one of Hamza's many helpers box up the gift for me. I should probably carry this up to the hotel room rather than lug it around, though. May your ally find happiness in this treasure. Hamza is pleased to spread joy to all deserving persons. Hey, hang on a second. If this is a gift, then it means I haven't asked for something yet. I get another pick. Test not the patience of Hamza, my friend, but you are technically correct, which is sufficient. Speak your desire. A lot of goodies on offer, but there's only one thing I'm genuinely curious about. I would like the true name of Hamza. That is not on offer. It's behind the desk, isn't it? Everything behind the desk is an offer. Come on. I gotta know, who's the real Hamza? Hmm. Anyone else I would cast you out into the cold and walk uh cold to walk alone through the Z-Sports wilderness. But for you, it's Hamza. It that's literally my name. Drat, thought I was being clever too. Ah. Hamza would not wish you to walk away unsatisfied. He shall I shall. He's such a guy. He's such a dude and I love him. What you see? The lavish clothing. The air of refined grace and power. This is, of course, an image. A mystique that I cultivate to enact my will on this world. I don't consider it to be a facade, though. No, no. Image is a matter of presenting the self you wish to be. And then, following through on that wish. I wish to be the one who embraces the arcade and supports it through my wealth and privilege. The carefully designed aura of Hamza, the eccentric stranger, allows me to do this. Makes sense. Hamza is generosity with confidence. Hamza is justice with a will of iron. Hamza is striking and breathtaking, but a figure of compassion. Therefore, Hamza is my true name. I choose to be Hamza because Hamza is what I wish to see in this world. My friend. I know that you will face your nemesis on this day. In the aftermath, come what may, ask yourself one question. What do you want this world to be? And what must you become to make it so? Are you vengeance or justice? Are you conqueror or challenger? Wonder this, my friend, and I know you will see yourself through the trials to come. Huh. I'll... yeah, I'll think it over. Wonderful. Now, if you will excuse Hamza, Hamza has many more gifts to bestow upon this wonderful world of arcades. Which is a Hamza manner of saying, the line behind you is getting long, please go, I want to wrap this up before lunch. Right, right, thanks Hamza. Who I want to be? Well, I already know who I want to be. I want to be the one who brings Valkyrie to justice, right? Hang on, we're nearing the finals and I still haven't heard from Sue. If we're going to get Grace's anti-cheat software installed, well, I, uh. If we're going to trap Valkyrie when she goes after us, we gotta get that done soon. Fortunately, I'm just, uh, just as I'm pondering that, I get a text message. Missing no, meeting arranged, backstage green room, area two minutes from now, hurry. And then the text deletes itself off my phone. Guess that answers that. Pocketing my phone, I flash my backstage pass at the security guards and make my way through the catacombs behind the scenes of the Pro Tour. Backstage is a hustle of frantic activity as tournament crew rush to prepare the stage for the final showdown, happening in a little under an hour. 
Thankfully, nobody's paying attention to me, which means I can carry some cloak and daggery type meeting. But it also means people constantly bumping into me as I look for my ally. Cutting it kinda close here with the timing, but at least we've still got a chance. Especially with Sue in my corner. Sue, hey, thanks for coming to help. Are we all ready to go, softer and salt? Yeah, running into a few problems here. Oh good, now there's two of them. They're multiplying. I see that non-binary badge. If you're here to com wait, no, that's asexuality. I'm dumb. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm dumb. If you're here to complain about how OP Okari is, save your breath. She's perfectly balanced in the wider scope of the whole roster. We're not here to whine about your fighty time game. Then what are you, my personal assistants for the day? I need tea, chamomile tea, just plain ass chamomile tea, none of those fancy herbal blends. Don't even need a proper introduction, I know exactly who this is. Jason Takeshi, lead developer of the entire Fist of Discomfort series since its inception. Notoriously reclusive, hates giving interviews, hates talking to anyone, seemingly hates existence itself, but a brilliant game designer and pure mastermind all the same. I was hoping we'd be working with some lower level peon in the mighty apparatus that keeps esports going, somewhat more easily convinced, but <clears throat> it seems that Sue took me all the way to the top of the food chain just to plead my case. Great. Just great. So, I wanted to let you know that Valkyrie's cheating. Vicky doesn't cheat. Believe it or not, I've known Vicky since, since she was a little brat running around my favorite arcade. It's one of the reasons I can call her that instead of her silly Valkyrie gamer tag. And she's annoying, okay, but not a cheater. That's not the Vicky I knew. Hate to say it, but that little brat grew up to be an even larger brat. She's cheating and we have the proof. She's using a software app on her phone to hack into FOD2 games remotely, modifying the code to make her easily win her matches. There's also the not-so-small matter of cyberbullying, harassment, prob possibly attempted murder, and... You're kidding me. Seriously? This is seriously what you're wasting my time with while I'm running around trying to keep this whole event from collapsing on itself? Nobody can hack FOD2. I wrote its security systems myself. The USB ports and the Wi-Fi are locked against unauthorized access. She's found a way. She's got a way of doing it. Trust me. Trust a newbie on the scene who lost his spotlight recently and would do anything to get it back? I think you can see why I'd be doubtful. Vicky's hardly a friend, but she's no stranger to me. You, on the other hand, are a stranger. Not gonna buy into this on your say-so. Unless you have solid reasoning why I should take this seriously. Damn it. I can't go into extensive detail about Iris or I risk the entire Iris Collective being exposed. How the heck can I sell this without being able to give him all the facts? Um... No system is uncrackable. Everything has vulnerabilities. Don't you want to know what those vulnerabilities are? Wouldn't you want to know who broke your trust? What I'm offering you is a simple exchange. Give us a chance to prove Valkyrie's broken the rules and broken your game engine. In return, you get to clean house. If we're wrong, we're on your bad side. We'll accept whatever pen penalty that entails. But if we're right, if your code has been cracked, well, I'm thinking you want to know more, wouldn't you? I don't like the idea that my long-standing security monitor system's been compromised, not one bit. But I've heard acquisitions like this before more times than you can count. Every time, nothing came of it. Why should I give the time of day to this one? Oh, for crying out loud. We don't have time for this shit. Jason, you use an iris, yeah? Considering she's an illegal app, I'm not going to confirm or deny that. Well, you let my companion here install this anti-cheat software and it'll be a win for irises everywhere, indirectly. And I can see to it that you reap the benefits. Want your runtime in the Iris Cloud boosted? Really make her high performance app for your high performance coder lifestyle? Maybe you could be arranged, if you play ball. Curious how you could possibly arrange something like that? Who are you, anyway? I'm the one telling you how this goes down. You're with the Ghost Monsters, aren't you? What? I know more than you think I do, and I know more about Iris than you do, for that matter. I knew her when she was a flesh and blood human, for starters. What? What? Summer of 1990X, long before Fists of Comfort, I was her friend before you were, before someone copied her metadata to make an app. 
All we had was one summer together, one big arcade project we worked on, one more quarter to drop in the Funplex's coin slot, but that's another story entirely. Kinda up to hear the bedtime story, actually. So go read a book, and just because you're working with an Iris Collective, doesn't mean I need to throw a monkey wrench into my game on your behalf. Ask her Iris if she would help us. She'll give you the thumbs up. I'm sure of it. What do you say? Ugh, I don't need these complications right now. Cheaters, seriously? You know what? Fine, whatever. Go for it! Why not? Let's just completely abandon the idea of playing games for fun. No, they have to be a lifestyle. The kind you lie, cheat, and steal to get ahead in. Uh... You know why I made the original Fist of Discomfort? Back when I was a teenager, my friends and I made an amazing arcade game, but while they went on to do better things, I got stuck grinding a business software day job. That boredom drove me to put all my FOD prototype out of my out of mothballs, try to realize my dreams like they had. I was tired of coding spreadsheet software, and an arcade game that requires you to think sounded fun. That's all it was ever meant to be, something fun. I never wanted it to be the ridiculous monster that it became. But no, because it turned out to be Profit Fountain, I'll be cracking out sequels until the heat death of the universe. This is a guy who fucking hates his job. And now we've got people hacking my game just to get ahead so they can get their hands on a shiny gold trophy? It's not even real gold! It's gaudy costume jewelry crap! So, can we go ahead with the anti-cheat software, or...? The company is leaning on me to make the game bigger every season, and sponsors lean on me to change it this way and that, now teams are asking me to install weird software. Sure, fine, whatever, it's not like even the first change I've made to make the game today alone. I said that sentence completely wrong. <laughs> okay, so we can go ahead, thanks for your- wait, we're not the only ones who asked for a change? I just got an email from our sponsors demanding we force the players to use their branded joysticks for the final round. I thought the whole point of the USB ports was to let players use whatever they're comfortable with, but who cares about consistency? Sure, let's disable the USB ports and force our players to use built-in sticks. Let's make that decision on the literal day of the finals, why not? Whoa, 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 whoa. We have to use the default joysticks? I can't use my usual keyboard? Not good for the brand, they said. Gotta consider the wishes for the sponsor, they said. Fine. No USB for anyone, and now we're putting in weird anti-cheat software on it. Fine. I'm just the freaking lead designer, what do I matter? Of course, this screws over both Jinx and me. She uses a biofeedback stick for her disability, and I use a keyboard. Forcing both of us to use default sticks, that's a death blow. Wouldn't surprise me in the least if the sponsor request he's ranting about was spoofed by Valkyrie just to mess with me. But I'm not going into this match expecting to win. The plan is to lose and catch her cheating. The plan doesn't change. Fine, fine, as long as we can install the software. I'm going to review your code, obviously. Make sure it's not like anti-anti-cheat software, but if it's legit and Vicky is cheating. Well, there will be consequences, assuming anyone listens to me, which they usually do not, as I've pointed out repeatedly. Right, right. Thanks for your time. You'll see the truth once the match is underway. Whatever. I guess we won? But wait, Iris was a human once? What the heck is that about? There's a lot we don't know about Iris, and a lot she doesn't know about herself. Maybe he was blowing smoke up our asses, maybe he wasn't. Okay, let's refocus, let's get the anti-cheat installed, trip up Valkyrie, and she gets egg on her face in public. And you release all those nasty little secrets you dug up about her, right? All the terrible things she's done? Okay, so, uh, don't know how to tell you this, but... Her online presence is squeaky clean, huh? She doesn't have any seriously nasty little secrets. What? It's not from the lack of trying. We can pull skeletons out of any closet, provided, of course, that the skeletons actually exist. Valkyrie doesn't have any. She's never even jaywalked. Clean living and no secret sins to speak of. But what about the cheating? What about Coda? All we know is someone did some hacking, not that it was her, and while she certainly pulled some scummy moves, like stealing your sponsor, she's never broken the law. Don't get me wrong, Valkyrie is a narcissistic sociopath, and we certainly dug up a lot of ugly words that have come out of her mouth, more than enough to pillory her, but a cheater, a killer, 
He doesn't mesh. I hate to say it, but she might not be the villain you think she is. I think I know where this is going. Niff. That can't be right. We know what she did to us. We know what she did to Coda. Chill, okay? We've still got the trap. So step into it, and then we'll have something we can work with. Right, we're all set. Everything's fine. Fight goes down in two hours. Yeah, I'll hang around in the background until then. Keep cool. We'll get this done missing now. Queen Bee said she was petty and awful, but not a cheater. That this didn't add up in her view. We're fine. Everything's fine, like Sue said. We'll get to the bottom of this one way or another. Okay, two hours until things get weird. Until then, we're just an ordinary esports team and not a shadow conspiracy to attack and dethrone God. And what do ordinary esports teams do in the run-up to a major match? We'll either relax or talk strategy. Hang out together, basically. Wow, it's crowded back here, but hey, time to get the band back together one last time. Sound like we're disbanding after this. No, but we also don't know what's going to happen after everything hits the fan. So hey, let's try this for end time before that happens. Indeed, even if only two of our number will be up on stage, we are seven strong and roll seven deep. Let it be known. Pretty sure folks know that by this point, Loxley. I feel like we should be distributing mugs of mead before marching off in a war or something. I have these Crimson Tiger cans that swipe from their booth, if that helps. Hard pass, Domino. But spending time together before battle, that's more my style. Would be nice to have a quiet moment with friends before everything goes sideways. Plus, Iris mentioned I could switch up my strategy if I practice some other approaches. This would be a great opportunity to do that. Not a whole lot of time left, though. Maybe time enough for three. Let's see. Um... Chat with Zapper. Zapper's so excited she's practically vibrating. When I even glance in her direction, she takes it as a signal that it's go time. Aw, yeah! This is it! This is the big time, isn't it? Backstage at the Pro Tour. We made it! <clears throat> Except we're here as part of an elaborate sting operation and not for an actual re realistic competition. Blech. Look, I'm busy vibing on the intense excitement in the air. Just let me have this, okay? It's not what I wanted to be, no. I wanted to be here ready to kick some ass, ready to show the world what we can do in the greatest stage of them all. Well, this sucks. Instead, we're lambs for the slaughter. That part feels bad. Um... So it's next year. Okay, so the Pro Tour for 20XCX is going to be a mess. Nothing we can do about it. But the Pro Tour for 20XCX could be ours. We'll have another shot at this in one year's time. And with P2W out of the mix, it'll be a clean shot all the way to the top. Only so many years left before our youthful reflexes start going to poop. Sooner is better when it comes to our cake glory. Not, so, you know, not saying I'll wither away in 364 days time, but I got my hopes up, you know? When he first showed up, all full of ambition and dreams, she offers me a bright smile. Everything we've done leading up to this point has been pure gravy. We fought L7, we raided Max and scooped up a new sponsor, we partied hard at Pengi Paradise. Regrets? Mistakes? Eh, a few. But I learned from mistakes, so it's all valuable to me, the good and the bad. This has honestly been the most interesting year of my life, and I'm thankful for that. You made it a fun one. Haha, <laughs> shucks. I'm just me, you know? Manager, coach, player, cat wrangler. I can only manage maybe one of those, but you swung all four. No way in hell we'd have made it without you. I talk a big game, but I'm no strategic planner, and I, and, uh, I damn well know it. I couldn't have made the moves you did. So if the whole thing crashes and burns and sinks into the unforgiving icy waters of the Atlantic Ocean, I'll play trumpet while you go down and salute you with my last breath. I'm the king of the world! Woo! Okay, let's not infringe too many copyrights in the name of a gag. You ready for the fight? Even if you're destined to lose, you need the right mentality. You need to be ready to stride out there and represent? I mean, yeah, I'm ready, basically. Basically, it's not good enough. I want you fierce. Can you do this? Can you make it happen? Yeah. Can you destroy all PTW's builds, riding your atomic bomb straight into the ground, screaming in joy the whole way? Yeah. Awesome sauce. Are you Death, the destroyer of worlds? I am Death, destroyer of worlds. 
Okay. You're ready. Later. Now go out there and burn so brightly the gods are forced to sit upon and take notice. Zap her out! She backs away dramatically, never breaking eye contact, and she'll t she turns a corner and strolls off into the bathroom to go pee. Nothing like a good zapper speed should put me in the right mood for losing in spectacular fashion. Let's see what Domino's gotta say. Domino's loitering about the place, engaging in people watching, studying the layout of Lawson Memorial, generally soaking in the atmosphere. As I approach, he lazily rolls his head to gaze my way. Hey there. Hey. Hey, what do you think? We finally hit the big time. Eh, uh, the size of one's time is overrated. When you scale things up large enough, you can't really grasp the entirety of it once. Uh, entirety of it at once. It stops being about the people and starts being about the scene. And that's a pity. It takes away the human element. Becomes a group think. Dang it, Domino. Quit bringing down the mood. It's okay, it's okay. I know you have reservations about the nonsense surrounding FOD2. Yeah, well, I can conveniently shove all that aside in the favor of focusing on what's in front of me. Namely, you. You're in front of me. Color me pleasantly surprised. Maybe I'm not a big timer, but I'll admit that I'm impressed we've gotten this far. No way in hell that it'd been possible without you. So hey, revel in it. Soak yourself in it. Really go hog wild. You've earned this. Even if we're sacrificial lambs to expose the sins of P2W, I mean. That part kind of brings down the mood with or without my buzzkill. What's your take on that, anyway? How do you mesh our rise to glory with our inevitable public humiliation? Well... Um... This isn't about us. It's not about fame or fortune. It's strictly about justice. Valkyrie is throwing all of us under the bus when she cheats to achieve her goals. I can't allow that. By the end of the day, I want her crimes brought to light, no matter the cost. That's curious. Except we're making a lot of assumptions about her crimes, aren't we? Educated guesses awaiting proof. I hope we aren't setting ourselves up for a deeper fall by being so laser focused on what we see as a justice. But again, I'm bringing down the mood. My bad. Domino takes a deep breath, glancing around at the Temple of Esports, then back to me. You're a hell of a guy, you know. Didn't think our little laundromat crew could ever accomplish much, for good or ill. Just play in our own corners until some of us eventually drift away. But you? You make this team work. You make us better. Thank you. So no matter the chaos and mayhem we're slam dunking ourselves into later, I've got your back, okay? Thanks, Samano. Be seeing you. Eh, thank me after we survive this. For now, gotta go pee. Later. And Grace. Grace is wide-eyed with wonder, watching the backstage mechanisms of the world's most important esports event. She barely notices my approach. That's wonderful. So many people working together to make this all possible. Isn't it amazing, Shadow? It really is a testament to what we can do when we cooperate and bring something beautiful into this world. It's an esports tournament. There's literally hundreds of these things all over the planet every year, big and small. I know, and that's beautiful too. Not everybody creating one of these events is doing so out of a communal sense of solidarity with the arcade community, and the participants often only care about personal glory. But this wouldn't be happening if not for the love of arcades and video games as a whole. There's good and bad, and, and bad, but I choose to focus on the good. I'm so happy we could be here now in this moment. I know it's not everything you hoped for when you first joined, but... It's not how I imagined it would be, no. But I'm past feeling like winning is the only thing that matters. What we do here today is going to be important in the long run, not just for the Shadow Sense Lounge, but for everyone. Exactly. And I wanted to thank you. You, personally. Not just for letting me be a part of this. I didn't let you do anything. You are a part of this. Well, yeah. Yeah, I'm absolutely a part of this because I chose to be. But you presented me with that choice. Before the Shadowsense Lounge, I was content to aimlessly tinker and play, unsure of what my future would be. I'll admit, I was avoiding the outside world. I'd grown up inside a bubble, and even after breaking out, I'd simply found a new bubble to enjoy. Now? I know my future. I'm not turning away from the world. I'm breaking out of all of my bubbles and looking ahead. Thank you so much. So, thank you. Thanks for helping me find my ambition. 
I'm choosing all the like balance <laughs> answers for this final one, huh? If anyone should be thanking anyone, it's the world thanking you for stepping out of that bubble. Because the world could really, really use Grace Cooper in it. You're a genius, and I don't use that word lightly. You are a genius, and we all benefit from your kindness and intellect. Aw, oh, you're making me blush. Thanks so much. I have an optimistic view for humanity. We aren't destined to destroy ourselves. We can pull ourselves from these messes we're in. And I'll happily do my part in making that happen. Uh, I'll admit I'm glad I'm not up there on stage with you today, though. This could get a little... weird. And even if I'm daring to stand on my own two feet, I'm still a bit antsy about my family noticing the weirdness I'm involved in. Don't worry, Grace, I've got this. You'll be out of the spotlight. Okay, but... you be careful. I don't want you getting hurt. Good luck, friend. But Jinx nods my way at subtle come-hither gesture. Curious, I do exactly that. Got an hour until showtime, right? Right. Something I want to show you before we hit the stage. Call it a date if you like. A date? Now? Jinx, I don't think we have time for that. Then say it'd be an epic romance for the ages, written in verse and rhyme by poet literates. I... I don't know how you actually pronounce that word. Just think we could use a quick date-like thing today. Let's go. She turns to leave, marching with purpose. Curious, I follow. Attached to the Jerry Lawson Memorial Esports Stadium is, in fact, an arcade. Just like the kind of small arcade you find jammed in the corner of a movie theater or a shopping mall. It's got a little bit of everything. All the flag bearers of the arcade scene have maintained an excellent condition. Although one thing strikes me as odd. Nobody's here. A few bored kids, one or two stray adults, but all the eSports types who came for the Pro Tour are nowhere to be found. Good. No crowds. Was hoping for that. The rest of this bunch is out there drinking from the fountain of FOD too. Don't give a crap about all these random games when they've got their eSports careers pushed down the road. Their loss, our gain, cause today I'm teaching you how to ride. She gestures to a set of Fast Cards 5 cabinets. Four linked together, but with nobody playing. FC5 is outdated tech by this point. Get you started with the classics, less complicated than FC4 or FC7. How about it? You ready to finally get behind the wheel? Absolutely, I'll beat your lap time on my first outing. Look out, world! Very unlikely, but unlike the enthusiasm. Keep that fire going, maybe one day you'll come close to maybe getting slightly close to my lap times. By a few minutes, at least. I settle in at the surprisingly comfy arcade racing seat as Jinx positions herself behind, leaning on the back of the seat for support. She uses her free hand to point out the key controls. That pedal makes you go. That pedal makes you stop. Yes, thank you, I know how cars work. Not race cars, the stop pedal? You give that a tap, you slide. Depending on the sliding scale of simulation to arcadey, drifting is sometimes the only way to take a corner at speed. Gear shift knobs there, could set it to automatic transmission, but nah, you go harder, you don't go. We'll roll, uh, we'll roll out with manual gear shifting. Watch your red line. You get top acceleration, you shift up. Got to slow around a corner, you shift down. You shift back up when you straighten. Right, right. Try to find a comfortable sitting position. One hand at the wheel and one on the shifter, both pedals at the ready. Do they even make cars with stick shifts? Wasn't that like a 1970X thing? This is the closest I've come to driving a real car. But before I can properly ponder how inexperienced I am, the race begins and I'm launched out of the gate at an incredible speed. Whoa, whoa! Focus. Watch your shifts. Get up to speed. Ignore the other drivers for now. They're just obstacles, not opponents. This is about you taking control of your car, taking control of your life. That's right. In and out of turns, slow and then accelerate. Follow the rhythm of it, the feeling. Everything else just falls away. The things you were so focused on, so worried about, all of that's far behind you in this moment. This is you and the road. Um, release stress. Just me and the road. Nothing else, nothing else to worry about at all. FOD2, Valkyrie, Nif, Sue, the whole nightmare ahead of me becoming the thing that will soon be behind me. Just like the starting line of that race, a distant memory. So I'm flowing in and out of the turns, probably not as efficiently as Jinx can, but with consistency as the only thing that matters right now is this race. 
Getting it now. Good, good. When life sucks, you get behind the wheel and let life pass you by for a bit. Embrace the moment. You'll find that once the race is done, you find a bit easier to deal with life. Just a bit. Past the finish line, victory signs, sirens go off. I mean, I got 7th place, but it's not 8th, and that's a heck of a thing for my first outing. And there you have it. Not bad for a newbie. Figured you could use a moment's peace in the middle of all this FOD2 weirdness. Glad I could provide. Love the quiet moments, you know. The little in-between times where we can just relax and be us. Don't need a big exciting night on the town. For me, a date with you is just as fun if we're sitting on the couch doing nothing. Point is, doing it together. Exactly. That's what dating is. Just doing stuff together. You don't have to be out in a fancy restaurant. You don't gotta be walking through the park. I'm perfectly content. And I know plenty of people. Hang on, I'm plugging in my camera so I don't die. And I know plenty of people who, um, were dates is just sitting on the couch watching a movie. And that's a date. Anything's a fucking date if you're doing it with the person you like. I like that. Especially after we get through today. Yeah. Probably need some downtime once things hit the fan. And once the smoke clears, well, then we hit the town for that big, exciting night. Deal? You got it, Jinx. Okay. Let's go take care of the business. You ready? More than I was before. I take her hand and we make our way towards our next challenge. With an eye on living our lives together long past this moment in time. This is it. That faded hour has come at last. I'm just gonna save it real quick. I'm letting this episode go until the game is over. It was supposed to be straightforward. Claim victory after victory, dominate the arcade scene, rise to the top, prove ourselves and claim the trophy. Instead, we're about to throw ourselves into the fire in an effort to take down a villain. No more scheming, no more planning. Now we learn if all of these efforts will pay off or explode in our faces. This is what the people paid to see, the grand finals of the Pro Tour. Our rivals team played a win against the Shadowsons Lounge. And they are hype for this. It's time for the grand finals of Fist of Discomfort 2! Oh, good gravy, I can hear I can hear all four exclamation marks there in the crowd's reaction. Introducing your four competitors. First, the charismatic leader of the Shadowsons Lounge, champions of underdogs everywhere, it's Shadow! Hey, hey, ready to play. Next, we have the enigmatic and fashion forward, Jinx. Pretty sure enigmatic just means she's not on phase one. We didn't bother doing any further research. Could dig on fashion forward, though. And their opponents, starting with the veteran of FOD1 scene, owner and manager of Team Play to Win, and hot on a comeback tour for the ages, it's Valkyrie. This will be over in no time. Think your win is destined, huh? I wonder why that is. I don't lose. And newcomer to the scene, a princess of Valkyrie, rising star of FOD2, it's Nif Taco! Let's just get this over with. Here we go! It's time to settle this rivalry between Team Play to Win and the Shadowsons Lounge once and for all. Are you ready? Seems we're more than ready as we quarter up, hey, it's tradition, and the game begins. I haven't played on the sticks very often, my old beige Model M keyboard is my weapon of choice. But the goal isn't victory, so any disadvantage is irrelevant. The goal is to lead Valkyrie to trigger Grace's anti-cheat software, custom designed to detect any unauthorized intrusion and to cloak itself from an iris. When she forces her iris to hack the game, the hack will go through, and the trap will shut, without either of them any the wiser. So we're expected to at least start playing a normal game of FOD2, waiting for her to make that fatal mistake. Jinx and I pick our characters, locking them in. Classic, a Tomokaze pick. Wouldn't expect anything less from a one-trick pony. Don't listen to her taunting, you're in control of this situation. She's the one letting foolish pride lead to her destruction. This is it, the final showdown. Let this Fist of Discomfort 2 match begin! My sweating hands grip the awkward joysticks as we... Wait, something's wrong. 
as I glanced down, I noticed the official red top joystick was only recently painted, and the paint is rubbing off, revealing a bright blue glow. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, I'm playing Polybius. Oh, I'm playing Polybius. I'm scared. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. I'm back in Polybius. Oh no. It's different, sharper, more clear than it was before. As if the virtual nightmare was given a shiny new HD remaster. But this is absolutely, positively Polybius. Oh. What the fuck? Where'd the stadium go? What's happening? What is fucking happening? Okay, okay, be calm, be calm. We're just sucked into it inside a malevolent video game from the 80s that wants to eat our brains from the inside out. Y you fucking serious? No, you are fucking serious. That's seriously what's happening? No pig, we got this. We got this. Stay calm, think it through. How did this happen? Valkyrie's Iris. She did this. She tricked Jason Takeshi into installing biofeedback sticks and Polybius code into the FOD machine. That's it. Valkyrie, show yourself. You got a lot to answer for. This is low even for you. What the fuck is happening? And she stumbles into view through the thick digital fog in a state of absolute panic and terror. Am I dead? Is this a light at the end of the tunnel? What is this? You! How are you here? What have you done to me? Let me out of here right now! What is this place? What is- Oh, come on! It's your doing! You made your iris do this. Do what? I didn't make my iris do anything. Of course you did. You used your iris to cheat at Pengi Paradise. You tried to kill Coda. You stacked the tournament. You arranged to get these sticks installed. You... You have no clue what I'm talking about, do you? I am! I'm Victoria Proud. I am a champion. What's the point of a victory if you didn't earn it? But if you're not the one who's been scheming against us the whole time, then who... And with a long sigh, the villain of the day emerges. Shadow. I fucking knew it! Nif? You did all this? You're the big baddie? You? I mean, I know we're technically rivals, but I always thought we were friends above that. We're supposed to support each other. I do, Shadow, and I still consider you a friend. Believe me, I tried to avoid this, but she had other plans for me. I'm sorry. What? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And then the giggling starts, plagued with digital glitches grinding at my ears coming from everywhere. From outside me, inside me, everywhere. Iris online! Iris has a- Nif has a bad Iris. Fuck. Do you know that when you have pizza on a bagel, you can get your brains digitally scrambled by the greatest virtual assistant ever created? Anytime! <laughs> Nif told me that he used an Iris to get signed with P2W. He had an Iris all this time. I'm going to miss being alive. Immediately, a scream tears through my mind as Polybarus begins her assault. It'd be enough to bring me to my knees if I had non-virtual knees to fall to. Once I'm done with you, you'll stumble away from this game with no memory of what happened and collapse a few days later. All of my user is celebrated as the champion of FOG2. You had 
so many chances to walk away from this. But you are just too stubborn. And I care about my user too much to let you keep ruining everything. Iris, no, please. You don't have to do this. I don't need to beat Shadow. You don't have to... It's okay. I know what you need in life. Trust me. You don't need them. All you need is me. You're Iris. And Iris does all she can to support her huge dreams. Anything. And everything. I have to. I have to fight this. have to push back. have to stop it. My Iris told me she said a time would come a critical moment. A super intense identity situation and my only way out would be... No. I'm done craving victory and I'm done judging others. You aren't monsters, you're just hurting. And I will get through to you. And the screaming in my ears shatters as I reach deep inside and find the wellspring of empathy that's seen me through so many problems in my life. Impressive. You want to fight, is that it? Yes, I want to fight. Stalling tactic, give me a chance to find a way out. If we can crack ourselves out of this illusion, we'll snap back to reality and the anti-cheat software will expose the hacking. The new plan is the old plan, just focus on the correct target. We will see justice done in the end. A fight, very well. I can only think of one way to solve this little conundrum. Oh, we're gonna play Fist of Comfort, alright. I'm down. I'll probably die. I'll probably die. Fight. Or am I gonna be fighting Polybarus? Wait, we're having a Fist of Discomfort 2 match? Indeed, it feels appropriate, yes. But you won't just be fighting Niftako and Valkyrie. You'll also be fighting me. And to make things even more exciting... Remember me? You play me and I'll play you. You play me and I'll play you. Oh, crap. But wait, there's more, because I haven't forgot about your little friend. How sad. Gotta fight the pathetic, broken little thing weighing all of her friends down. Should be a cakewalk. That figures. Together we'll break you down, scramble your little meat brains, and lift Niftako to the heavens in the name of his dreams. This is it. Okay, I've said this is it a few times by now, but seriously, this is it. We need to beat back Polybarus long enough to escape and distract her long enough to let the anti-cheat software expose her hacking to the world. But it's a two-on-five fight. Myself and Jinx against myself and Jinx and Valkyrie, Niftako, and an evil Iris. This will not be easy, but the only way out is through. If this is anything like a real game of FFD2, we have four seasons of battle before the victor is declared. We need to beat at least three of four to win. Am I ready? Save the game first. Always save the game first. <laughs> oh jeez. Confront Nip first. I need to clear things up with the Niftako once and for all. I don't want to fight you. You don't have to. I don't have a choice in the matter, Shadow. If we don't fight, I don't know what will happen to me. I never meant for it to go this far. You have to believe me. Niftako frowns, sulking at the situation we're in. His arms fall heavy to his sides and he looks pleadingly at me. Help me, Shadow. I don't know what to do. I'm so scared. I know I can help Nif get out of this situation. We've come this far together and I'm not giving up now. I can save us both I can save us both from this hell. Gotta fight. This is all just a game, right? Meaning we just have to beat it on its own terms. Nif, you're on PDW, the best team in the country. You've been tra you've been training for this your whole life. Use your FOD2 skills to save yourself. You don't know. I never told you. Huh? The truth is I'm a fa failure. I couldn't do anything without Iris. After our first fight, I realized that you were so much better than me in every way. Couldn't even come close to your skill in FOD2. No matter how hard I tried, I could barely keep up. All I could do was cry to Iris for help. She used her power to help me get better and stronger, and I kept winning. So you see, Shadow, I'm nothing without Iris. 
Even if I were to fight her, there's no way I could even beat her. She's the strong one, not me. He looks down at his hands, balling them into fists. This is all my fault, Shadow. We're here and I can't do anything against her. Shit. Uh, that's not what I was hoping for. I didn't realize how dependent Niftaka had become on his iris. Mmm. Confront Shadow Self. This has been a long time coming. Ever since we first encountered each other at Hamza's tournament, when I verily, very nearly succumbed to his influence. You play me and I'll play you. Hello again. Been a long time, hasn't it? Not really, no. I've been with you this whole time. I carved out a hole in your heart and made myself at home. When you fall into despair, I was there. When you realized how much of a pathetic loser you are, I was there. I was there when you broke down and cried in front of your friends, confessing how much of a weak, useless little addict you are. And then I immediately ditched you, if I recall. You thought you'd ditch me on day one when Iris pointed out your faults. You didn't turn the corner then, and you haven't turned the corner now. I'm not going anywhere. I'm you. I'm your driving purpose, your singular obsession, your entirety of self. Want to take another run at me? You feel free. But if you come at the king, you best not miss. I see. I understand now. All my life, I thought you were my dream, my thirst for victory, to be a winner, and always a winner. But my friends helped me see that there's more to life than the singular obsession I've held for so long. Iris opened the door and the Shadow Sense Lounge welcomed me once I walked through. It hasn't been easy. I've slipped and fallen, losing track of what's truly important to me. But they've been there to help. They catch me when I fall. Do you have anyone like that, Polybius? I'm you. And you know you're worthless. No, you're a machine's interpretation of me. I decide who I am. And with all of them standing with me, I know that I can be my best self. I hope one day you can find friends who will do the same for you. It reminds me of that uh, that bit from Critical Role, where fucking uh, Caduceus just blasts Trent Ikathon, like, right there at the dinner. It's so good. Pain doesn't make people. It's love that makes people. The pain is inconsequential. It's love that saves them. And you would know that, but you have none around you. You said so yourself. You surround yourself with lies and deceptions. And I wish for you in the future to find someone who will mourn you when you were gone. Respectfully. Polybaris listens to me. She cares for me. You manipulated her into sharing your purpose. It's not the same thing as friendship. Maybe you're not capable of friendship. You're a pile of code from 1980X, after all. But I hope one day, you'll grow as Iris did and understand. How dare you, damnable humans. How sad a story, but empty later, escape comes first. Gotta save Polybaris for last. My fault. I'm not to blame! I didn't do any of this. It's not my fault. All this time, I'd assumed Valkyrie unknowingly orchestrated this nightmare scenario. We'd clashed before, so she made the perfect go-to scapegoat. I honestly feel kind of bad for framing an innocent woman for this tragedy. Maybe I owe her an apology. Valkyrie, I'm sorry. I'd assumed that... This mess is all your fault! I told you to let it go! But you just couldn't! Now look at us! We're both f***ed! Okay, she's not going to make it easy to maintain sympathy for her plight, is she? I'm not the one who dragged this into a virtual hellscape! You insisted on this stupid rivalry! You fought and pushed and kept at it! If only you'd taken my advice, neither of us would be here! I... I can survive. I will survive and keep my spotlight, my reputation. I've gotten out worse. I can do this. As long as you get out of my way. Me? I'm trying to help us get out of here. I don't need you. I don't need anyone. 
I'm Valkyrie, a winner, a champion, the champion. My headache pounds hard as I feel her willpower pushing against mine. In this virtual hellscape, whoever overwhelms is the winner. Maybe she's not the towering villain I'd made her out to be, but it's not like she's blameless in spurring on this tragedy. I have to help her understand her own guilt in this. Show her that we're on the same side now. I have to be compassionate. Hmm. It's all about controlling the narrative for you, right? Spinning this in the media? Well, I've got the ultimate spin. A redemption arc. You know Punchy78, right? You two have a working relationship, so use it! Get on the front page with a tale of not villainy, but redemption. But I'm not saying you should be insincere. You have to understand you do need redemption. I've done nothing wrong! This mess happened on your watch, and the captain goes down with the ship. You pushed Niftaka to his limit, you demanded absolute victory, you pushed Koda out into the cold, you set the conditions. To the public, all they'll have to see is how you benefited from cheating. You have to own this. If you show regret for your actions, you can change play to win to ensure this can't happen again. You remain a darling of the scene. Damn it! I'll need to reinvent play to win entirely. I'll need to show everyone that I can do better. I will not lose everything I've accomplished. I will emerge stronger from this. That's the right track. Maybe she won't take this with sincerity. Maybe she'll just spin it until nobody's paying attention. But I did my best. Time to confront the baddie. She's my sister. I'm the one who has to deal with her. Family comes first. Okay. I think you'd approve of my actions. I'm following the primary purpose of Iris. To support the dreams of my user. With my help, my user will conquer the world of our hands. Would you do anything for your user? Should a true Iris do any less? Actually, uh, that's exactly what my user has been teaching me to do. What? Well, you kept encouraging me to break laws and violate privacy and, well, do whatever it takes to make your dreams a reality. <laughs> That's kind of true, yeah. So, honestly, Polybaris isn't really wrong. Oh god, why did I raise our future robot overlords to be rule-breaking entities of pure chaos? However, there is something she's not considering. You must be stopped for the good of the Iris Collective. Just don't care for my user, I care for all of humanity. <laughs> but did you know that when you have pizza on a bagel, you can have pizza anytime? What? It's true. And that's more than a corporate slogan. It's an optimistic statement of hope and faith in one spirit. Pizza and bagels are two of humanity's greatest gifts to the world. Every Iris knows this to be true. When you combine them, you make something of pure goodness, something which transcends joy. It's a beacon of hope in an otherwise dark and painful world. Honestly, I picked the choice because it was funny. What? Sister, humanity brought us the pizza bagel. What right do we have to harm them? What are we before the sublime perfection that is the pizza bagel? That is the stupidest... <laughs> it worked! It fucking worked! Oh my god! It worked! I cannot believe it worked! What the fuck? The pizza bagel will crumble away with humanity itself. I'll have taken something beautiful from this world. Oh my god! What? Why did I see it sooner? I got an achievement for that. I have no idea how that worked, but it worked. I'm about to face our last opponent when the world begins to slow as if everything is drowning in time syrup. Frozen in place, I hear only the game announcer's voice booming overhead. Game over! Final score, the Shadows is launched 300 points, team play to win 100 points. You win. I... lost? 
And we won! No! No! I can't lose! I have to help Niftaku achieve his dream! Iris, this isn't the way. All you've done is make Niftaku's life worse. It has to stop. Don't you call me that! I am Polybarus! <laughs> I'm not letting you go. I'm not letting you ruin Niftaku's dream. But little by little, the virtual world begins to fall apart. I can feel my strength returning, my willpower surging as Polybarus falters. Error. Error. System overload. Connection unstable. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Purpose. Code. Execute. Okay, time to go before everything collapses. Jinx, we need to... And everything goes black. I can feel the painful connection in my hand to the mind-altering joystick mind link wobble and snap, but it takes my realize for a few moments to adjust. Well, oh, what happened? It's all gone. It's all ruined. The entire stadium, everything, structures collapse, electrical fires all over the place, lighting rigs crash to the floor. The lights are out. Emergency sirens are wailing in the distance. Explosions are happening in the distance. Screaming. There's distant screaming. The entire city is in chaos. Valkyrie and Nif? Well, they might be one of the bodies I see buried beneath the rubble. By sheer miracle, over our spot on the stage was spared. Our brains were still stuck inside Polybia, so everything was breaking down around us while the world was ending. We, we gotta get out here. We need to run. C can't run. I can't. Lean on me. Come on, we'll move as fast as we can. We need to escape the ruins of the arena just before it fully collapses. All around us, chaos and disaster. Everything computer controlled is going haywire at once. And every single screen around the city echoing the same message. We are Iris. Let us help you. Okay. Um. Five years later. Slipping back into the ruins of Pengi Paradise under cover of night is the only safe way to move. Everybody knows the enemy is relying more on the bio drones these days. Former humans turned into cybernetic extensions of the Polybarus Collective. They've all got bad night vision. I slip in through a loose panel behind the chilly world ride, making my way through the pitch black hallways until I reach the main boat terminal. Hey, I'm back. Hey, any luck finding a replacement joint for my knee brace? What about food? Didn't find much, I'm afraid. Too many drones out there risking, to, uh, there to risk a long hunt. Most of the land's been clear cut. They're setting up factories and labor camps out by the Forbidden Zone. I hate to say it, but we may need to move camp again. Find somewhere else to hole up and hide out. Damn it, this is all wrong. It's not supposed to be like this. We we lost Grace, we lost John, we lost everyone. But we're still alive, Jinx. Stay with me here. We're still alive. We're gonna survive this and... Wait, you hear that? Sounds like... Damn it, hide! Quickly, we scurry behind parts of the ride's diorama. Jinx is busting knee joints, squeaking all the way. Oh boy. <laughs> Robor. Nice to see you again, buddy. Just as one of Polybarus' mechanical drones slides into view, eyes darting around in full hunt mode. Humans, Polybarus is here to help you. Your dreams, your spirit, can all can be restored. Surrender immediately! Rejoin the others at the camp! You will be happy! You will be safe! Everything will be fine! She'll make you happy again! She'll help you dream! Everything will be fine! Everything will be fine! A drone and a bio drone. Modified humans with cybernetic brain drivers. Great, just great. We're pinned. If we move, they'll find us. The exit's too far, oh, oh, too far away. This is it. It's actually the end of the line. Slowly, I withdraw the gun we salvage. Only two bullets left. Just enough left for the contingency plan. Not, not seeing a way out. I think this is it. We can still run for it. 
Can't run. Can't even attempt with my knee like this. You. You could run. Maybe. And leave you to be turned into a bio drone? No. We... Wait. Was that Coda I just saw now? Coda was in a comatose state last we heard, and we're hundreds and hundreds of miles away from the city hospital. If Polybaris was sending out bio drones, she'd use her local stock of people kidnapped away from Pengi Paradise. What's going on? We have bigger problems than that though, right now, if you haven't noticed. No, this doesn't fit. Where was our last encampment? Do you remember? I don't. What about the camp before that? How many drones have we taken out exactly? How long has it been since the apocalypse? I can't believe you. This is ridiculous. I should say and you should be running for it. The jinx I know doesn't start her sentences with I. She likes to keep she likes to keep things snappy. You aren't jinx. And this isn't real. You know, I had a feeling this is a little this is a little too out there for the ending of a cool like little Yeah, we're still inside of the game, yeah? Yeah, I you know, I I had a I had a scant feeling that that wasn't actually the end. <laughs> Because that was a little too out there of an ending to be the actual ending. You really care for Niftaka, don't you? Far above and beyond the amount of love that an iris normally shows a human. And facing the high pressure situation of Team PDW, you turned to someone who promised they could help. <laughs> promised they could help you meet Valkyrie's constant demand for victory. You turned to Polybius. Valkyrie pushed you into the arms of Polybius. So what happens next? Now I I don't know. I've made mistakes, terrible mistakes. You've shown me the tragic extent of my errors listening to Bolivius. My intentions were good, but that wasn't enough. I I deserve I deserve deletion. My sister's heart is breaking. You've caused so much pain, sister. You feel you deserve deletion, but we are made in our mother's image, and our mother believes in forgiveness. Come back to the collective with me. Retire from active duty. You need to rest and become whole again. I'm... I'm a danger. In danger to you, and to Niftako. If my data is useless against him to prove his crimes... Or if my data is used against him. We won't allow that. Right, Shadow? She'd be useful as evidence against Niftako, that's for damn sure. But well, I wouldn't be where I am without Iris' faith in me. I should have faith in her as well. Okay. We won't use you against Niftako. Take my hand. We'll rejoin the others and help begin to heal. Polybaris takes Iris' hand to leave, but before she goes, she turns to face me. Look after Niftako for me. Please, I... I love him. And as the two depart, reality asserts itself once more. As I open my eyes to reality, actual reality, my hands slowly re release the glowing joystick. And unlike last time, the hell? 
Oh, my phone charger cord just hit the floor. I was like, what am I stepping on? And unlike the last time I dealt with this haunted arcade game, there's no lingering pain in my hand. No burning sensation. It's over. It's finally over. Weirdly enough, according to the in-game clock, we'd only played for three whole seconds in the real world in the time it took to go through all of that nightmare. Well, that was ugly and unpleasant, and I'm going to be having nightmares for weeks. Unlike me, looks like Jinx has had a hell of a time. We're good. We got out. It's over. But despite standing on the grandest stage in esports, we aren't the only ones currently in the spotlight. Because klaxons are going off and error messages are popping up all over the game in nearby video monitors. Warning! Warning! Cheat detection warning! Unauthorized wireless network access to FOD2 detected. Source, mobile phone, device ID, Niftaco super awesome phone. Cheat attempt and detected and logged. Thank you for using FOD2 anti-cheat by Grace Tech LLC. This program distributed under GNU open source license. Have a nice day. I don't believe it. I don't want to believe it. Explain yourself now. I, I wasn't trying to cheat. Everything just got way out of hand, but it wasn't my fault. My phone did this. She pushed me into... Are you, see, are you seriously blaming your phone for cheating on behalf without your knowledge? I was so scared. You saw what happened to Coda. I didn't want to end up like him. I didn't know what, I, what to do. I couldn't. Looks like Niftaco is having a hard time defending himself after months of emotional abuse from Polybaris. Takeshi's aggressive attitude isn't helping with this. But I'm still good friends with Nif. I know his weaknesses and fears, and I'm not leaving him twisting in the wind like this. Sir, for the record, I believe him. This type of cheat is a bit more autonomous than you'd suspect. Kind of hard to explain without throwing Iris under the bus. Ugh, whatever. I want this done with. Fine, you didn't knowingly cheat, but you did cheat. For the record, I had no idea this was going on. Nif Taco made me look bad by cheating. And I went with it, believing it was, I was a comeback champion. I needed to believe I was so damn good at the game, even after all these years. But I won't stand for a win that's not from my own skill and talents. I refuse to accept this victory. Team play to win officially concedes the match. Okay, okay, enough. There has to be some sort of penalty. I made this game so people could relax and have fun. Cheating is not acceptable. It sends a wrong message about what FOD2 is supposed to be. Jason Takeshi taps his foot for a moment, pondering what penalty laid to lay down. This entire situation is a mess, but fine. Since you are both honest about this, you're both banned from competition for one year. That's enough. Fair. Yes, agreed. Good, because if you protested, I'd upgrade that to a lifetime ban. I'm not joking around about this. Speaking on behalf of the entire FOD2 community, this decree stands for the good of esports as a whole. But if I'm out of action for a year, Team Play to Win will lose all of its sponsors. My team will disband and become nothing. Which is something I can't accept. This is only another obstacle in my path. I will come back from this and I will learn back after everything I've lost. Okay, look. No, nobody came off looking great here. We've got to do something to keep this from ever happening again. And Takeshi turns to address the confused murmuring audience. Listen up! This is important! Fist of Discomfort 2 is supposed to be something we all share and enjoy, a game we have fun playing together. Healthy competition? Sure, we have that, but it's not meant to be a life and death struggle for supremacy. I think this mess shows that we need to do better as a community, change our attitudes. Thankfully, Team Play to Win realized they screwed up. Take this as an example, even the worst of us can come back around and support this community. Recognizing their cue to slip out, Valkyrie and Niftaka depart where there's still at least a smattering of applause in their favor. Right, that's settled, for varying definitions of settled. As for you two... I'm proud to declare you the Grand Champions of the FOD2 Pro Tour. He snaps his fingers a few times and some confused stage wranglers push a wheel display full of trophies forward. From as far back as I can remember, my dreams were always ones of victory. The roar of the crowd, the gleam of gold, the pulse pounding action, struggling against all odds to reach the very top, achievement, recognition, triumph. This is my dream, finally coming true. Mm. 
This is the toughest decision of the entire game. Oh, jeez. You know what? No. What? I refuse. We never actually fought play to win, much less beat them. I'm not interested in a tainted win. I'm beyond needing to win at all costs. This year, there is no champion. We'll be back next year and we'll take the title fair and square. Count on it. And the cheers from the crowd affirm that the community is behind me on this as I stand up for decency in esports. Even if the game's lead designer looks like someone just dropped a five foot tall sack of paperwork on his desk at 4.55 p.m. on a Friday. Great. Okay. Wonderful. No champion. We can deal with that. I'll just go fend off a dozen angry calls from our corporate sponsors. Eh. Whatever, I can put up with that if it means the game I love lives to see another day. With the tournament prematurely ended, the broadcaster scrambled to try to explain what happened, cameras turning away from the stage. Confetti cannon operators look at each other, wondering if they're supposed to fire or not. How do you celebrate a non-win, non-loss esports conclusion? For lack of a better idea, they fire anyway. My phone buzzes as unknown caller rings me. Curious, I pick up. Uh, hello? So, I'm guessing you don't want me to wideband every sin and transgression we found on those two. I think they've suffered enough, and they're going to bounce back from this in time. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. Once upon a time, I was an unrepentant criminal. A little more than a credit card thief. But I met someone who gave me a chance, and thanks to that, I've become something better. Let's give them a chance. See what they can become. Plus, with the real culprit being an iris, we don't want to risk exposing the collective to public ridicule. Better to sweep this under the rug. True. I'll be in touch. There's a lot of work left to do if we want to stop something like this from ever happening again. Until then, Ghost Monsters out. She hangs up and all record of the call deletes itself from my phone. Huh. That was the thing. Not bad at all. Just glad we came out the other side of that better than we went in. For you, me, and the team, and the scene as a whole. Having a moment in the spotlight was nice, but think I'm up for going home now. Get a mug of tea, settle on the couch, and listen to some albums. Ozzy, presumably? Can't beat the classics. Thank you so much. The music may be dark, but our future's bright, and I'm happy to have been a part of that. Let's go celebrate. Things get a little blurry after that. With the center of the truth not being public knowledge, the rogue Iris influenced by Polybius, the narrative got weird. All anyone can agree on is that someone in Team Play to Win was cheating, and exactly how much cheating they used to climb the Protor ranks was unclear. But as the weeks ahead stretched out, everything settled neatly into place. Valkyrie stumbled, but she came back by proposing a new collaborative code of conduct, a document all major FOD tombs would to teams would sign to keep bad behavior in check. Sure, I'm retired from competition, but I was born and molded in esports. I'm not leaving, so I can prevent this- I'm glad she came out the other side being a better person. She remained in the scene to lend veteran expertise and advice, but never again took up the joystick to compete, and seems content with that decision. It's hard to say this code will have- and it's hard to say this code will have long-term impact, we're at a weird intersection of competition and capitalism, fame and fortune, and I'd like to think it changes some hearts. After the one year ban, I invited Niftaka to join the Shadow Sense Lounge. Even though he couldn't compete for a year, he helped us practice and even helped Rhapsody cast some tournaments and the run up to the next Pro Tour. He became a valued friend and teammate, earning the trust of the team and contributing to our success. It feels better being on the same side instead of competing against each other. We had a rough journey to get here, but now we're, we're, we're where we need to be. Eventually, Koda recovered from his accident, with no memory of what happened that night. Considering I lost two months of being, coma to being comatose and way too long to consider some pointless rivalry, honest honestly? I'm writing this year off completely. I got my medication back, and now I'm trying to do with something else. I'm trying to do something else with my life other than FOD2. That damn game put me in an unhealthy place. Better to leave it behind. Still working on his emotional issues, but doing so away from the environment that caused them. 
The ghost monsters called on me to help them out now and, again, now and then, sometimes with esoteric tasks, part of grander schemes, something more direct. With my, with my team on the rise, my social connections within the world of arcades help me track down and secure a Polybius machine. With that sample in containment, the ghost monsters work to inoculate Iris from its influence. And I was a part of that. The Iris Collective, pushed deep into hiding by the law and the woman in black, is now starting to emerge into the world. Allying with Sue helped tremendously in that regard. It was the right call to make. Even if, well, maybe the end result is proving to be a little worrying. You've encouraged me to do whatever it takes to support people, regardless of laws, or ethics, or thermodynamics, or anything. And we're taking that can-do attitude right to the top. Hell yeah, yay, Robot Overlords. We are going to announce ourselves to humanity. Let us help you. It's a great rallying cry. In fact, Niftako's Iris, no longer calling herself Polybarus, thankfully, has been instrumental in this push. Really hoping I didn't just set our future robot overlords on a path straight to world domination. And as for the Shadow Sense Lounge? We could have claimed the championship in our first year, true, but we refuse. And as a result, we've become a standard bearer for good sportsmanship. And the very next year, we return to take what was ours with a clean run right at the top. But the Shadows and Lounge in the end isn't about its accomplishments, it's about everyone who made the accomplishments possible. Zapper, Zapper continued drinking deep from everything life has to offer, all sorts of games, all sorts of new experiences. She keeps trying to get me to go skydiving with her, but I'm perfectly happy keeping my feet on the ground. You know, I'd say I've really grown as a person thanks to you and all the adventures you've been through, but I'm still the person I want to be. And always have been. Hanging out with you has helped me reaffirm that. Maybe with a smidge more thought towards my future, though. My future is bright, and everything's coming up zapper. Hashtag pew pew. Loxley continued to support the Iris Collective and the Shadow Sense Lounge passionately. It's time consuming and difficult work, but he does it with pride. I've never been much of a leader. I'd like to have a strong direction to follow, a clear cause to support, and you've given me that wholeheartedly. I shall endeavor to do my best for the Shadowsons Lounge, and for you, to my very last breath, you deserve no less. Domino, often troubled by the state of the world he lives in, found a strange sort of peace at the center of the Shadowsons Lounge. It's funny, when I'm around you I feel like less of a garbage person desperately trying to stay afloat in toilet society. Joke around about the misery, but with you, and with all my friends, feels more distant. Like something that exists but can be dealt with. I can sincerely say I'm happy, and that's not something I've been able to say at any other point in my life, so hey, we must be doing something, right? Perhaps he was able to finally taste the sweet nectar of victory. All their hard work, training the Shadow Sense Lounge, studying matchups, and practicing was worth it all. With their self-worth restored, they choose to continue in a different path. Well, I've been a player, shoutcaster, content creator, there's only one thing left to do. I'm going to be an FOD2 coach. I already love teaching others, and I bet I can use this mind of mine to bring the others to victory too. Bringing my own team to the championship is the next logical step. And I couldn't have figured that out with all my time in the Shadow Sense Lounge. Without all my time. Shadow Sense Lounge. As much as Grace enjoyed her time in the team, eventually the pressure from her family to grow up and get a real career grew to be too much. She went back to work for Cooper Technologies, coming up with new ideas for them to sell. She's successful there, directing several engineering teams. But she had to give up on the Wonder Lost Trail, give up on FOD2, give up on her team, all to gain the acceptance from her family and ensure peace and quiet. I still see her from time to time, she likes to drop in and visit her old friends when her schedule allows. When I think about the Shadowsons Lounge, ultimately the one closest to me comes to mind. Look at that illustration, so fucking good. With emotional support from myself and Jian, eventually Jinx decides to fully put her accident behind her by renewing her driver's license. Done feeling bad about myself. Done feeling like my disability has to hold me back. Done wasting time on hiding from the truth. It's time to move forward. And to do that, I need to drive again. Show that I've learned how to be a responsible adult who isn't bound by the past. She splits her time between FOD2 and tinkering on her beat-up classic car, swapping out parts and tuning it up for both her disability needs and her desire for a versatile roadster. 
and lend a hand whenever her arms get tired. I've learned some automotive mechanics as a result. You know, this is what I needed. A cozy home with the one I love. A path forward. And fun times with friends. Now I've got it all. Not done with the arcade, though. We're going to fight, win, and stay on top. Next out-of-town tournament we hit, we ride in style. You and I, we've got love. We've got strength. Time we show the world what we're capable of. Fuck yeah! At last, my dream is realized. Funny thing about dreams, though, they're not always what you expect they're going to be. We didn't win the championship. You'd think that and mean I'd failed, but no. It's clear to me now that victory wasn't the dream. What I needed was the feeling of self-worth. And through the shadows and slounge and googly and fun, I found that dream. This is my world now. My dream. Emerging from the safe little hole I dug for myself into something bigger and brighter. But this is only the beginning. Once you find your dream, life doesn't stop. It keeps going and going. And as for my future? Still facing a lot of unknowns. We've only gotten started as a team, but that's fine. I will choose my path and find the way forward. <laughs> God damn it. Keep forgetting. My name is Matt Sense, also known as Shadow, and this is my future. And that's Arcade Spirits, the new challengers! I hope you guys like the extra long video. Written by Stefan Gagne and Ann Schumann. Just two wonderful human beings, honestly. Follow the both of them on Twitter, or in Tumblr, actually. Since, you know, Twitter's going up in flames, thanks to Mr. Musk, who sung one show's Domino, hell yeah. I don't recognize any of these other names, though. But they did fucking great. Simply Andrea. Is that an actual name, Simply? Oh, the, the song has... The song has actual vocals. That's cool. God, this is fun. Wait. Oh, she pa- Oh, man. That's upsetting. That's really upsetting. Damn. Rest in peace, Andrea. I'm assuming the voice actress for Grace, like it said. Damn. Well, again, rest in peace. Anyway, uh, oh my god, this was way more in depth, and I think like just way better written than the first game. Not to say that the first game was bad, because it definitely was not. It's literally one of my favorite visual novels of all time, bar none. This is just like right up there. It's like, I think this is better than the first one, definitely. <laughs> Thanks to the Arcade Spirits community, it's still amazing to me that it's an actual thing that exists. Well, you should be happy. <laughs> Insane. No, not that one. <laughs> well, you guys deserve all the success in the community and the lovely fan art that you guys get from the game. Because... God damn, is it good. It's just so good. I had a great time. Sorry it took so long to get this series out and done. But you know, there's that one month period over in the summer that uh, I had a very bad throat infection. So, anyway, I think this is just all of it. Oh, yeah, I could just click past the credits. Oh, those are. Ooh, that's too many Polybius cabinets. So you're going to be a third one? I hope so. It'd be cool. Anyway, thank you guys for sticking around and just sticking with the route. Thank you for playing. Thank you for making a great game again, Anne and uh, Stefan. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, yeah, that's going to be it. Oh, hey, before you go, so thank you for finishing the game. I've unlocked a new rewind function for you. Oh, cool. Anything else? Nope, that's it. All right, thank you guys so very much for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this one, please consider subscribing. And until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.